and I'm going to put plenty of water now all over my um, whole thing. <clears throat> So I'm not going to leave anything at this point dry. I'm going to wet the whole the whole paper. So plenty of water. And really this is so that I can keep everything very atmospheric in the early stages. I want it all to be really nice and soft um, in places. And the only real way to do that is to keep it keep it fairly wet to start off with. So that's nice and moist now. Okay, now while that's just settling in, I'm gonna mix up some colors. So the first color I'm gonna have will be um, a yellowy color. So I'm going to use, or I should have sprayed my paint. Let's give those a quick spray. So I'm gonna use some transparent yellow. We'll have some transparent yellow, which is a really nice golden yellow. If you don't have that, you could use lemon yellow or you could use um, cadmium yellow or something like that. So I'm going to start to bring some of this in. And I'm not really trying to draw any particular shapes with this. I just want it dobbed on here and there, different places. Might even tip it and get it running and things like that in a bit. Going to take some cerulean blue now and get the tube open. Going to put the cerulean blue and mix it with that same transparent yellow. A little bit stronger because I want a bit more colour now. And again, I'm going to just dob bits of this on fairly abstractly. Don't want it to be too neat. Just want bits of colour here and there. Oh, got hair coming out my brush. And now I'm going to go into some ultramarine, oh, sorry, cobalt, just to darken the blue up a bit. Bring some slightly darker blue bits here and there. All the way through. So I've got some steam coming through here, so I'm going to have to wash some of that out in a minute. Blue down there, a few bits over here. Wash my brush off. Just going to take my spray bottle. I'm going to get that moving a bit more. Just going to give it a good, a good spray, particularly through this misty area. I want it all to just run away, and it's going to just bleed, and it's going to go absolutely everywhere, but I want it really soft. So this steam is just percolating up from the wheels. And at the front here as well, I want it really, really steam, really, really soft. So I'm just gonna wash all that out. Got lots of steam at the top of the engine up there. I'll just let all that run down. So some more color now while that's doing whatever it's going to do. Just lift a bit more of that out. Keep it a bit softer. Okay. Take some slightly darker colours now at the bottom. Obviously by dark I don't mean too dark because we're still very light in the painting at the moment. I'm going to take some um, orangier colours and put that into that blue. Just going to make it go slightly brown, browny yellow sort of colour. Then we start to bring that to the bottom of the train. Just some of these darker colour, brownier colours. Maybe put some burnt sienna in that as well. Into my yellows. All the way through. 
and I'm not really trying to keep it exactly to the shape of the of the train at this point. Just want these colours to sort of percolate around. And then above that, I'm going to put some um, something slightly purpley with some blue in it. So purple and some cerulean. So it's going to be kind of a, a dusky purple. And start to bring some of this in just in my cabin area. So I'll need to do this fairly quickly because I want to wash some of this out still. So get these shapes in. The train coming down. All the way down. This is quite dark as well, so let's get that in. Just let that all bleed and merge. Dark shapes here. Okay, now I'm gonna take a damp brush now, not a wet brush, just a damp brush. So I'm, I'm taking all the paint out of it. And I'm going to start to lift out some of these areas. So I want my steam to be coming all the way through. Take some tissue as well as I'm doing this. So I'm lifting all of this out. So I'm just blotting the brush off on my tissue just to lift this paint out. So that we start to get this steam coming up the train. And I want to give the feeling that it's coming from underneath the wheels or near the wheels. So, and again, on this side, it's coming out of this area and up. There we go. Let's lift a bit more of that out. Perhaps a little bit there. Lift out a tiny bit through the top of that thing. We've got some light actually on the on the cab itself, or the sorry, the train itself. So I'm going to take a bit of the colour out there. A few bits of colour there could be lifted. Okay, now I think while it's still wet, I'm going to try and drop in. A few more colours in this front area. I want it a bit brighter there. Take some more of my orangey colour. Put some other yellow in it. So it's pretty bright orangey, orange colour. And I'm just going to drop some of this into this already wet area. that to come round and again I don't really want to make it into anything specific as such I just want some some colors that will help when I get when I go darker in these other elements will just help to make these bits stand out so some oranges in there if you have a bit of stronger orange down here touches here and there. Uh, we could have a little bit on the on the wheels. Obviously they're going to be quite red when we, once we get those actually painted. But just to get a bit more colour on them for the moment. That's fine. And then just going to lift out while it's still wet front there knock a bit of that out just to redefine some of the shapes that I need just restate the steam a little bit more down at this wheel 
and also at this wheel. You must do this with a, a damp brush, and I must stress a damp brush and not a wet brush. If you try and do this with a wet brush, you're going to have cauliflowers everywhere. So I'm really squeezing all the water out of the brush and lifting just by pushing the brush into the wet paint. Right. I think that's probably about enough for this initial wash. Paint is great to start off with. Into which I'm going to put burnt sienna. Burnt sienna is the red one, Stuart, isn't it? It's an orangey brown, yeah. Yeah. Like a burn, burnt uh, orange. So I've got a colour now, like, let me show you what I've got. So the colour is like this. Okay. And I'm going to wet the shape first of all. Now, obviously, because we're dealing with some actual structures here, I'm just going to wet the shape that I want the paint to go into. So it's going to come across the top, down, and then actually that cylinder isn't going to go quite so dark around that little square thing. And then I'll probably just wash it out as it comes down. So let's start to drop this colour in to these shapes or this shape. Comes down. And now this is going into dry paper. So I'm just bringing it down the, down the shape. I'm going to go into more brown now. at the bottom. Really it's not um, for anything other than just add a bit of variety to the colour. Keep that shape fairly, fairly um, as it should be. So there's a few little bits and pieces kind of sticking off out of the side. Going to indicate some of those. And then I'm going to change the colour again. <clears throat> I'm going to put some cerulean in it now. Into exactly the same mix, just adding cerulean blue. And then coming back. And this is again on dry, um, dry paper. So some of these funny little shapes, bits and pieces as it comes across these pistons. Sure, Robert knows what all these are called. Um, coming across there to about here, and then moving up into this part, a bit more blue into this cylinder shape, and then we've got some shapes that come off of that and there's a disc some sort of disc thing there little silvery bits there and then on top there's a very dark more brown into the blue so this shape here is quite well defined so I'm going to keep this dry still and it comes up and over and then it comes to about about there and then it changes to red let's just take that shape that far and then we've actually got some quite nice little bits of dark kind of intermittently underneath that beam which makes almost for an abstract, really. So I'm just going to paint some of those in, not all of them. 
just bits and pieces. Because this piston comes all the way back to about there. And then there's a little bit of dark underneath that one. And then this actually is very red. So I'm going to go now into a bit of cadmium red into that same mix. So it won't be a bright red, it'll be a dull red because obviously we've got those other colours mixed into it. Might just add a bit of water first. Just to keep the shape, just to keep the shape a bit softer. This is coming down to about where those other pistons are. Put this colour in. Into there. And again, we've got some red bits in here. Let those mix together. And then the wheels are kind of in here, so I'm just going to abbreviate the wheels. I'm not really going to paint the whole thing, I'm just going to indicate where they are. So it comes underneath that piston shape comes down here and then we've got some more bits of machinery kind of hanging off so I need to leave those unpainted coming round and then it comes back up That'll do for the first wheel, or the start of the first wheel. And then we can put, oh, put the rim on it afterwards. Soften that off. And then I will bring the start of this one in. And again, what I have to watch is that these all line up along, along the same edge, otherwise, it won't look like they're sitting on the same piece of track. So we've actually got some shapes there. There's a little sliver that just comes in here. Tiny bit at the top there. Coming underneath this. Carries on round. Comes back up. Kind of almost like a half crescent moon, really. That sort of shape. And then there's sort of a round piece in the middle. So we'll just pop that in. And this will be very dark up in there, but we'll leave that for the moment. And this other wheel, we can't really see it very clearly, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do some similar shapes that I've done on the other wheel, because at the end of the day, this is going into our mist, so I'm actually gonna wash out um, a fair amount of this wheel, because I want it to be just disappearing into the mist. So I need to put the paint down, and then with another brush, just start to lift it back like so. So it then disappears or starts to disappear into that area of mist. So let me do that again so you can see that. So I put the colour down so it stains the paper like that. Then I could take my damp brush and then just lift that off. Just wipe that off a bit. And then I could just wipe back so that the, the wheel just starts to disappear. darker there coming round just a bit softer okay and then again on this inside edge you want that a bit softer there as well so this wheel is almost just evaporating I 
Yani neyse toplara. And then let's put the front wheel in. Now at the front, because it's in a bit more light, I need to brighten up the colour a bit more. For that, I'm going to take my cadmium red and some yellow to make it slightly orangey. And then work this into the shapes. This wheel is coming down. So I need to bring these wheels down a little bit because this wheel is lower at the moment. So it has this sort of <laughs> spoke type shape that goes round the middle. And then it comes out into the main part of the the wheel. I'll just get that in. We'll start to get that in. It comes round. Like, oh, that one's gone a bit too wide on that side. So I have to widen this up. Not a great circle, but we'll be okay. So we'll just show a little bit of the top edge of the wheel. Like so. Not quite sure if that's all on the same line, probably isn't, but never mind. I'm then going to wash off this brush and then just get my steam to soften this left edge. Just lift a bit of that out so it's not quite so sharp. And there too. Soften the bottom of it. Right. Then I can move on now. <clears throat> into this middle area. So I'm going to take some water. Ideally, that would be clean water. And define all of this red or redder area that's through the front of the train. Take my red colour, drop some of that in. It's quite red over the arch, real arch. Then there's a shape that comes down here and it kind of comes across. We've got some little, I'll leave a little edge there just to show that that's it upright. And then just paint all of this shape in. Kind of comes forwards right to the front almost looks like um map sort of big metal eye bars eye beams or whatever they're called um all the way down and then it's got a bit of angle there comes through so that's that for the red and then the red continues up or the red and the yellow i should say carries on up so I can get this all painted in now leaving this pistony type shape unpainted it kind of comes over up 
In fact, I'm going to put a bit of water in here. All the way through here. Actually, that should just come straight down, shouldn't it? So keep that fairly, fairly light and make it a bit darker at the top. Particularly at this area because that's going to be quite a prominent change between the soft steam and the, um, the actual harder shapes within the, the train itself. Got this red. I'm not sure what it is. I think it's a pipe or something. But I'm going to let it bleed into some of those shapes. Just let it run away. And then on this right hand side, I need to just quickly wash that out. Otherwise, it's going to leave a line in my steam, which I don't want. So let's just quickly block that off. So it just sort of disappears into the steam, like so. Now, got the red coming here now. Taking the same ready colors. I'm gonna follow this shape along this, this beam. which comes all the way across. Leave a little bit of that orangey sh color showing from underneath. And as again, we get to the steam area, just taking water and start to wash that out. So we just let it disappear with clean water into that, into that steam area. I'm just taking plenty of clean water and just washing that whole area out. Okay. Then the next bit of red I can get in before I start to get into some darker colors. More red and orange again. I'm gonna put a bit of this up right in. Just let it bleed. This comes down and then into this up right here <clears throat> near this wheel. We'll get some of that in, and then we've got also some red in the middle of this piece here. about there and then that continues off into this wheel at which point it again just disappears into the steam. So we just again wash that out. <clears throat> Let it disappear to nothing. So for the bottom all of this in here, this is quite silvery, so I'll let that red dry first before we put that in. Uh, we've got one more red actually bit there needs to come in. Again, a little bit more red and, and the yellow together. You can put in this piece, comes to there, and this bit of beam sort of comes to here. This is pretty red as well, actually. Let's put that in as well. Like so. And I'm gonna re-wet my area that I want the mist in, which is gonna come all the way through, kind of all the way through here and down. 
So this is all going to be the mist area. Might make it a little bit larger than I want it because I'm going to bring some colours into this. And I just want them to bleed in. So fairly wet. And I'm only going to do that one because obviously this one on this side, the mist doesn't really bump into or the, the steam, not mist, the steam doesn't really bump into it too much. So taking my Payne's grey colour, starting off on the front of the cab, I'm just going to put my first wash of darker, darker tones through the um, through the shapes that I've got here. So there's sort of a bell, some sort of bell thing on the top there. And I'm almost painting this like a silhouette. So I'm thinking of it as a silhouette. I don't want too much variation. I just want the colour to kind of go down fairly evenly. So it comes up and over. Oops, gone a bit too far there. I have to make my chimney a bit wider. It comes down across the top here. In fact, I'm just going to run a bead of water across there just to soften that off. As I bring these colours into it. Let's just drop that a bit darker there. So it comes all the way across, then there's this funny, I'm not sure what that is, a round thing on the top there. A bit of piping. There's a bit of something going on there, not really sure. That comes down. And then we continue across and then into our misty area, steam area, I could call it misty area. I'm going to wash that out, just let that evaporate. Back to my darker colour. And on the lower side now of this patch, bring some more, more of that same colour. More Payne's grey, a little bit of the brown. Coming all the way through. Now the front of the train, I want to keep it fairly um, cylindrical. Although there are some little ancillary bits sticking out the front there, so I might just put those on at the same time, for the same colour. And that comes across, down. And then we've got sort of a box, a box shape there, which will be a bit lighter than the general body of the train. Coming all the way through to about there. Now I want to go darker now, a lot darker. So much more Payne's grey much more brown for this bottom edge. So all the way along here, I'm going to go really dark. Really, really dark. So it comes all the way underneath to where the red line is. Oh, I've gone over my red line, never mind. This comes underneath this bit of red. And on the front here, we come very dark, like that. A few more spots of this very dark colour. We'll put a bit more brown in it, just in this area. Just lose a bit of that, soften that off. Some more darks, more brown, more Payne's grey. Very, fairly dry now. So I can get, still fairly moist, the paint up here, but 
I'm going to put some darker shapes <clears throat> just at the top there. Um, maybe even some darker shape there on the on the train. So this is almost like the shadow kind of colours. Um, we've got some darks here coming out the front. Um, there's actually a very dark shape right at the front there. We won't worry about that for a minute. <clears throat> Just looking to see whether that's fairly accurate is not right so that needs to come a bit more rounded there in the front now while that's um, mingling I'm going to wet my cabin just this shape up here um, which is going to be the roof of the the engine. Take that back. We're almost out of the picture, really. Uh, I'll bring that down a little bit further. Make that into one shape. There's a little window. Try and keep those roughly at the same height. And this is coming down now to our steam. Oops, I've just gone over his hands. That was clever. So coming down, down the back. And then I need to wash out, wash out all of that with my brush. As this is all in the steam zone. Uh, just going to soften off these edges, keep that very, very soft. <clears throat> so it just disappears to nothing there. I'm just going to take a rigger now while that's still damp. And pop in a few stronger drawing marks. A bit more brown in that. <laughs> so I'm going to detail up underside of the cabin there's perhaps a few I don't know maybe some wires or something hanging down perhaps there's a rail or something there the inner edge of the window oops I've gone over his hands again that's not very clever he obviously doesn't want any hands Get that in there. Perhaps there's a few marks looping out. Looping out on the right hand side there. A bit more brown. Put a few just again, not really sure what they are, but just they always have little bits and pieces sticking up here and there on the top there. Okay. Let's block some of this water up. There's a lot of water down here. <clears throat> now the next thing I'm going to do is to give an indication of where the train is sitting on. For that I'm going to wet the whole of this bottom section along the line of the carriage or the undercarriage, whatever you want to call it. Just wetting that whole thing, trying to keep it relatively straight. And into that again, I'm going to put my same browny grey colours. darker from this right hand side 
coming lighter as it goes over to the left. So more paint. Just doing that in one, one stroke. A bit darker again. Lift off. <clears throat> and then I will take some cerulean blue. And from this left hand side, I might bring a bit of cerulean back this way. <clears throat> Where it does continue across to the left there. And then my steam, I need to just take a bit of this out for the steam. Just coming through and up. Just lifting a bit of that out. <clears throat> okay, now I need to let that dry. So I'm going to give it a blast for the hairdryer again. And then I can start to get some um, stronger colours on. Let me just grab my hairdryer. Right. Does anybody have any questions at this point you need me to answer or do you want me to look at anything you've done so far? No, everybody's silent. Diligently painting away. Stunned silence, I think that is. I think it might be stunned silence, yes. <laughs> All right, I'll just carry on then and maybe in about another how are we doing for time? Maybe in about another 10 minutes then I'll, I'll come around and see how everybody's getting on. Right. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drop in a little bit more colour. I feel like the steam on this top part of the train is not showing up enough. So I'm going to bring some more colour up into this section before I go back into the body of the train. For that I need clean water. And I'm going to re-wet everything but the steam. <laughs> so it's coming out of my funnel. Over here. Might well bring that down all the way to the train itself. Like so. So we just put some water on there. Do the same on the other side. All the way through, even that little bit in there. Okay, and I'm going to take some, I think it goes a bit more just straight with the burnt sienna, I feel. The brownie colours, drop some of those on. Not right to the edge, but reasonably close to the edge, just going to let it creep out. Get some of that on there. 
right up into the edge of the train. A bit darker. And we'll bring that out to the left with some more brown, but also touch it. Maybe we'll go a bit more colourful, um, a bit more yellow in it. So quite a goldeny brown now. Just going to give that a spray. Bring that down the front of the train there. And this is all very soft at the front. Right, put that down. Mop up a few of those spots. Might still need to go a bit darker there, but it's fine for the moment. Now I'm going to go back into the body, the body of the train, and get some more shapes developed. So starting from this front edge, I'm going to work back. I'll go with a um, cerulean blue into the paint grey. So it's quite a bluey grey. A cool grey, I should say. And I'm going to start to bring that into these shapes. So any bits that are darker. So like under here. So we can cut in some of some of these bits i'm going to put all of them in just give an indication of where some of these darker shapes come i've actually got a it must be a light or something on the front here so let's put that in And then that's obviously connected to the train somehow. So we'll just add that. We've got to we'll do this as a quick stroke. So using the tip of the brush, some sort of rope or wire, or I don't know what it is, some sort of connection tube. We'll just roll the brush over that to soften it in the middle where the steam is passing over it. Fine. Back to the other brush again. More the bluey grey. So we've actually got a little bit of red in that as well. Got a sort of a box type shape in here. And I'll we'll just indicate what that's doing. It comes across down, just make it fairly abstract. And then that comes down and then around. That will do. Showing up that little bit of pipe work in there. Maybe an indication of that upright that's there. A 
few lines here and there. Another bit of wire tubing comes across. There's wires and tubes going everywhere on this thing. This comes over. And then we can go darker in here. Leave some of the background showing through. So there's actually more ropes under that pipe. Comes over and then meets this shape there. Again, just some dips and dots to show the darker bits, lighter bits. Now I'm going to change the colour up a bit more, a bit more um, brown in it. As I continue along this piece of piping, quite dark. On the underside of it, there's some brackets, sort of there, a couple of uprights in there. Carries on back. All the way towards the steam area. <coughs> and then underneath here we've got some nice strong darks. It's almost just painting an abstract at this point, just looking for little triangles, little rectangles, any shapes that you see, you just try and paint them. Don't have to be that accurate as long as it looks machine like. Not really doing a schematic drawing, we're just kind of giving an impression. Now I'm going to go and thin the wash out now so it's not so dark. <coughs> so lots more water in it. It's still a grey, but just not a dark grey, quite a light grey. And I'm going to use that then to give me the idea of these silvery or more silver type pieces of metal. Now, coming through here, lots and lots of things going on there, but we'll use some shadow over the top of that to pick some of those out. We've got this big upright piece here, which comes all the way down, and down again. Cylinder here. <clears throat> it's a bit low, but never mind. And then we've got pistons. Maybe this way. More triangles. We've got more, more little rectangles here. Little bracket shapes. more of these over here. Coming down. <coughs> that joins up. Got some shape there. On the front over here is a bit more. Got that grey in there. This then is all quite grey. The underside of that piston thing is 
quite gray. Some slightly darker, darker notes. Pretty dark now. Right in here. Break these shapes up. Get the um, shadow shape started to develop. <laughs> the little things there this comes right the way down to the actual trained track itself very very dark at the edge of this wheel like I say put some blue in that I think ultramarine in, in that colour. Change it up a little bit. A few spots of dark in there. A couple of pieces here and there. Got some nice darks at the back here actually. And this is all really, really dark under here, so I'll need to recoat that. Give it a bit more depth. So again, more paint gray. Might even just use some neutral tint as well. If I can find it. It's a neutral tint, which is a bit almost like black. It's like a purpley black. So just to get some very, very strong darks in there. Some more really dark darks. And some of this machinery bits between the wheels. Down here we've got a lot more dark. <coughs> Coming down, use some little gaps. Meeting to the other wheel. Comes to about there. And then we're into a steam on the right hand side of that wheel, so I won't paint the air. Can lift a bit of that out. Now, this box thing needs a bit of colour on it. Let's put some water into that grey, just to put a pale grey through this box shape. And leave the lid light. Not so light, white. A bit of um, ochre, a bit of red together. Just in his face and his ear. Underneath his cap brim. He's got a little cap on there. Try and get his hands in that I keep, that I was very determined to paint over. There, there we are. We'll let that dry and then I'll put his cap on. <clears throat> Let's get back to the other reference. So I need a bit more, a bit more, actually I've left a bit of masking on there. I'm going to put some more darker marks now on to just pick out even more wires and tubes and all of those sorts of good things. So I'm going to take the Payne's grey again, pretty pretty dark, with some fairly strong blue in it. 
Uh, so it's a pretty strong, dark, bluey, bluey grey colour. And I'm going to use this now to start to detail up a few of the elements um, within the image. So we've got some, as I said, we've got these little ancillary bits on the front of the train, which I can put in, shape up the little light that's sitting on there. Put some dark underneath the the bell. So I think it's a bell. It might be a funnel or something. There is actually quite a lot of shadow um, over some of these elements, which I'll probably put in in a moment. Just get a little bit of that. Some of these detaily shaped in again, fairly fairly dry. I'm not making the paint too wet here. Got this nice tube, kind of comes down, up, and then away. Can put that in. Not entirely sure what this thing is, but I'm going to put it in anyway. And it goes up and over there somewhere. Got more horizontal sort of lines in there. A few verticals. Let's make that into like a little cabin. Put a little lock on it. Darken all this up. Dark on, on there. There's actually some more wire tube things coming around the engine there. <clears throat> Two darks there. More dark still. And underneath this shape to the back of the train. You can put in a lot more of these like little wires and things that are hanging down in these areas. Lots of little dits and dots and bits and pieces in there that look like detail, but are just really just marks. Now I have a bit more dark in these areas. It's quite dark actually underneath this shape. Get this to stand out a bit stronger. These cylinder type pistons shapes. We've got lots of like nuts and bolts and all sorts going on. Just make that a bit stronger. <laughs> Little ropes and okay, that's probably enough of those. Let's go with some. Um, I think we need a bit more colour, so I'm going to take. I don't know. Let's go with some. I've got a lot of brown in there already. Let's go with. Got turquoise. Let's go with some turquoise. Since we've got some bluey, bluey colours here and there, and take some 
Um, this is gouache, but you could just use acrylic or watercolor for this. Um, and I'm just going to bring some, I don't know, some abstract marks, perhaps a few in the distance there. Perhaps as, in a, as a carriage, like there is in the reference in the background. Just to get some little bits of colour over there. Could have a bit in over here. Just to break up this. Perhaps there's some coloured machinery or something in there. A few dits and dots. Uh, I might have a little bit of that. Perhaps this sign. Make that turquoise. Use it almost like the, almost like a highlight. Um, so instead of being a white highlight, we can make it a turquoisey highlight. Can have some of that on some of those bits. Perhaps a bit going across there. Get that to show up a bit stronger. A few bits there, just to break up the monotony of some of these colors. Okay, enough of that. Let's get some white. <clears throat> Take some white squash or white acrylic or whatever you've got there, it doesn't really matter. Just a few spots of this here and there. Perhaps a little highlight on the top of the train here and there. A few spots. Maybe the odd. I tried to put that in masking fluid, but I'll just accentuate that with bits of ropes and wires. And all these little coupling things that go between, between the trains. 